Okay, so today we got another golf cart that came into the shop and uh, they believe it was the starter. They were stepping on the pedal and the cart was doing absolutely nothing. So the rule of thumb when you, when something usually goes wrong with your machine or your small motor is typically you want to look at the easy stuff first. And one thing you never want to do is we call it the homeowner's opinion, is you don't want to take your machine to a shop and say, I think it's this, especially if it's an expensive part, because what happens is they automatically know, okay, well, they are already prepared that it could be this and that they're going to pay for this. So you always want to start with the easy stuff first. So if you're going to take it into a shop or something, start with something really inexpensive and say, I don't believe it's this. I think it's maybe the fuse. Maybe it's a bad fuse. And because uh, if you give an educated guess for something more expensive, which we come across all the time, they always think it's something worse and it come, turns out to be something simple. So in this case, they believe it's the starter. Now a starter for a golf cart can run you anywhere depending on where you shop, whether it be Amazon or you go to the dealer direct, anywhere from 60 bucks on up to 250 bucks. Okay, so their homeowner's opinion is the starter. So we're gonna take a look here and I'll show you what we found. All right, so here is the cart and I already took the seat off the seat basically you just pull the handle fold it up and pull it straight up the seats back there but it just locks into these two levers down there all right so the first thing is you can see the key is turned on now when you step on it it's not doing anything completely dead all right so the first place you want to start is your battery. You get yourself a little voltmeter and see if I can do this with one hand here. One of these days I will get a camera set up and find your positive. For those that don't know, your positive will have the plus sign on it, which that one does there. And we're going to hook a terminal up to the positive. And we will get our negative. And hook one to the negative. Now our meter is giving us plenty of volts. So we know it's not the battery. We've got plenty of voltage there for a little golf cart. The next thing you want to do is you want to go around and you want to check all your wires now visually the wires look okay so you give them a little tug make sure nothing is loose all right flip up these caps make sure there's no corrosion or anything but for some reason our power isn't going from here to the starter now could the starter be bad possibly but you don't want to jump to that right away because then you start wasting a lot of money that's not necessary so some machines may have a seat switch check the seat switch make sure it's connected and uh, there's no loose wires on it or anything uh, wouldn't be the spark plug but you know while you have it open just check all your connections make sure you don't see anything that's cut in half or unplugged and in this case on first inspection, it doesn't appear to be too bad. So we're gonna take it up, take it up in the air and see if there's anything underneath. Now, not everybody's gonna have access to a lift to be able to get underneath. Uh, if you have a jack, maybe some car ramps, you could pull it up and get it up in the air. But you wanna, however you can get it up there or get underneath, you want to just kind of do a inspection underneath. Now, we don't need to inspect, obviously, anything to do with our suspension. It's going to be more or less in where your wires are, 
starting where the pedal is because when you depress the pedal you're getting nothing so everything here in the pedal seems to be connected so we will go back here and look at some of our wiring here and up there is the starter which you can see it's the wires from the starter but you can access them from above all right so one thing you can do is just kind of check them all make sure you don't see any breaks make sure they're tight they all seem to be pretty tight and good up there all right so upon inspection all the wires seem to be okay now we're gonna bring our I gotta walk over here we're gonna bring our bring our cart back down with your voltmeter the next thing you want to do is the starter I hooked up the meter already here the starter has a positive wire which let's see if we can get this down there uh, there it is you can see is red okay so we have our positive terminal connected to positive wire and this positive I mean the negative from our battery meter I'm sorry to your black wire here which is the negative now the way this works when you depress that pedal the battery will send that voltage to there so if we step on the pedal, put our meter here, we're getting nothing coming in. So that's telling me that something is not right in the wiring somewhere. So even though upon inspection everything looks good remember they are covered by wire looms so there could be a break in the wire somewhere so a couple things you can do here is backtrack all your wiring pull this loom off and get yourself a uh, a, a tester a, po a power tester with a bulb on it and kind of track back until you get that bulb to light up and see where the break is. But before you do that, you can, and again, you probably did this on your pre-inspection, but you wanna just wiggle stuff, okay? So you start up front and just wiggle wires as you're stepping on that pedal. All right, come up here. Sometimes if there's a break, by you wiggling it, it may make the wires touch and this thing would start. Uh, some wires here, jiggle them. You want to step and come back here. We can take these off now. Positive here. Step on the pedal. Here's our negative. Up. Oh, there, there it goes. That's it, right there. There it is. I'll be darned. All right. So, upon inspection, it looked good. see if we can pull this wire loom back a little bit. There's tape there, but that definitely feels brittle right there on that negative. So there it is. That is the uh, source of the problem right there. The ground wire broke in half inside of that wire loom. Now upon inspection, you wouldn't see that. So, it doesn't need a starter, 
we're just gonna strip that wire loom off and we're gonna splice that wire back together and that'll be it that'll be fixed now had you taken that to some mechanic that maybe you didn't know or whatever they'll fix that wire in a matter of minutes that's all it's gonna take me but they already know that you thought it was the starter and some people you know if you have a trustworthy mechanic he would say hey it was just a wire but if he didn't know the people there's some shady people they would have said hey you're right it was the starter just to make that extra money in this case they don't need the starter they just need the wire fixed we'll have this thing done in about 10 minutes and back out to work again so that's it just hopefully this video helped you to you know just trace all these things on your cart don't always jump to the the biggest expense 75% of the time 80% of the time is something really really simple uh, wiggle some wires just spend a little time looking at it yourself without getting hurt if you have the right tools um, but hope this helps and hopefully this will save you some money like we saved them some money and I'm gonna go splice that wire together and we'll see you next time on what to do